you recommend that they can do to practice so that they improve at a faster rate than someone else with the same skill set at the same time? Hi, everybody. Thank you for watching this video. Today, I have a special guest with me. Uh, her name's Keta. She is a student at MIT, and she won first place in AGOI. From, and she's from Georgia, so yeah. Keta, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Of course. So why don't you first tell our audience a little bit about how the Georgian selection process works to make the AGOI team? Because I think most of our audience is from the US. Sure. So in Georgia, national each year, we have several stages to qualify to the national finals. And then we have team selection tests, where three national teams are chosen. Uh, teams are chosen for IOI, EGOI, and AJOI. And that's how we qualify and get into team for IOI and EGOI. Okay, so when did you start first taking your first coding competition? Uh, I started coding in seventh grade, which was like um, six years ago. Okay. And, but I took coding series. I started coding seriously in, in ninth grade, and that's when I participated in my first OPA. Um, I started working on myself and practicing co on code courses, and then I qualified to get the EJOI team, which was held in Berlin. So when you took the first, you first took the national selection test, right? Yes. When did you first pass that and make it the team selection test? This was in 2020, summer. So what year were you? You were ninth grade. Ninth grade. Okay. And when you made the team selection test, did you make the EGOI team your first year you took it, or was it? Uh, EGOI started like three years ago. This was actually EGOI 2020, but it was the third year of the one team. And we started, Georgia started participating in EGOI in 2022. So the first time I made it to the EGOI was in 2022. So when you were studying to go from the team selection test to making the EGOI, what did you, what was your process there like? How did you find problems? How did you figure out what you're going to work on? Uh, I mostly used to practice on code forces. I started practice. I used to um, give like solve problems of just, like some fixed difficulty. I remember in ninth grade, at the beginning of ninth grade, I started with problems of difficulty of 1500, and then, like in 2022, I was solving 2700, 2800 difficult rating problems. And the process was quite challenging. I used to participate in contests weekly, in all of the contests. I used to be used to code as well. Um, and yeah, this was a great process. So, what were your approximate scores on UCL when you were in GOI going like this? Um, I used to do, well, I qualified to platinum, and I never did the contest seriously after that. So, like, I used to solve one problem every two weeks, one or two problems. In platinum? Yeah. Okay. And so, you're practicing on code forces. What do you think made the biggest, like, what did you do on code forces that helped you go from solving 1500 to 2700 of problems? Um, I used to, like, choose problems. I used to sort them by tax, and I used to, like, choose problems I was. That were my weak points, I would say. For example, I always hated constructive problems, and I started well on the constructive problems, like greedy ones. And I guess that's what helped me the most. And also, like, contests in general helped me with time management and stress management. So, that was also one of those things. So, during contests, what was your contest strategy like? I guess code forces and OI competitions are a little different. Let's we'll talk about the book of so for code courses, my strategy was like starting from the easiest problem and like get to the harder one. If I can't solve the problem, try to skip it. So it's super hard to do so. And for OI style contests, I think one of my main strategies was the fact that I never read problems at once. I know that mo most of my friends like read all of the problems and then decide which problem they want to think about. And my strategy was that I just read the first problem and try to get most points on that problem. As as much as I could, so, and then switch the second problem and then to the third one. So that's what my main strategy was. That's interesting because I've noticed that personally, and for a lot of other people, reading all the problems at the beginning tends to tends to work a little better. Do you think? So obviously, when you were taking the contest, you were able to get all of the problems, or like get a bunch of points on all of the problems. Do you think if there was a competitor who may get close to zero points on one problem? that it would be beneficial to pick the easiest problem to start with, or do you think that everybody should try to spend a lot of time on all the problems? I feel that everyone should try to 
like the proximity same amount of time on each of the prompts, multiple prompts. So like if you feel like you're progressing on a problem and you're making some progress, I don't think you should just give up and read another one if you like. Even like personally for me, it's what's going to be better on my focus on my concentration. So that's why I usually choose one problem and just try to get as much points as possible. Even if it, if I even if I don't get like separate So you took the first EGOI contest. How did you do on the first one? Did you, how did you do it? You just took it twice, right? Yeah, I participated in EGOI twice. Uh, in the first contest, I got the first place. I Congrats. Sold, thanks. <laughs> I sold all the calls on the first day, then did a bit worse on the second day, but yes, so I ended up in the first place. And during the second participate in 2023, I did super terribly on the second on the first day. There were two constructive problems, and I'm blaming on that. <laughs> and yeah, but I kept kind of a comeback on the second day, thankfully, and now I managed to get get second place. It's amazing. Congrats. So let's just say that there's two students out there, right? Clearly, these two, these two students, both of them are competing for EGY or IOI or whatever the competition may be. And let's say they're both twins. Um, they both spend the same amount of time on Usico. They both are equally talented, have the same amount of brain power and everything, yet one wants to beat their like, twin brother or twin sister. They want to defeat their sibling. What would you recommend that they can do to practice so that they improve at a faster rate than someone else with the same skill set at the same time? Sure. First of all, competing is a good, good in my opinion. So let's give that he's, they are competing with their twin. And what would they do to like improve? First of all, they should enjoy the process. They shouldn't really have that goal of beating their twin if they don't really enjoy the process. So that's the first advice to like try to enjoy the process as much as they can. And second of all, like try to think about the problems in your free time as well. So I don't believe I don't think that it's like solving problems and working working towards IOI or EGOI should be um, like a chore. It should be like an enjoyable process and you should try to think about problems all the time, even when you're like out hanging out with friends or yeah, in your free time all the time. But I believe that's uh, to beat someone else you want to beat. I guess the f like it should be your first priority. You should make it your first priority, and that's what helps. And for like practicing tips, I would give is or call forces. You also got like some great problems in Python, so find your goals as well. Yeah, yeah, so check out some silver as well recently. And yeah. You said check out some of the silver ones recently? Yes. Yeah. 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 This book has great problems in general. Silver problems are getting harder, but I don't think they're at EGY level. At least not at the moment. Maybe in maybe a few years. We'll see. Well, EGY has like two easier problems, uh, which can be said. Like, the first one is definitely most possible. That's true. Definitely true, but I imagine that when you were competing with the higher levels of EGY, you were working on getting those harder problems or the really easier ones. Yes, sure. <laughs> All right, so this, these two twins are competing with each other, and you said competitiveness is, is super good. Um, tell me a little about that. Like, who were you, like, were you super competitive when you were competing for EGY? Yes, I believe. Um, even for both for EGY and IOI, I was competing with most of my friends from Georgia, and like the goal of like doing better than them or like doing <laughs> as they did was one of my main goals. So in competitiveness does help does help as long as it's not unhealthy. So when does it get unhealthy? It gets unhealthy when you um, try to hide the problems you're solving for your friends. Ah. Uh, yes. Yeah, collaboration is a good thing. Collaboration is also a good thing, but competitiveness is also quite motivationally tough. You get motivation from like other people. Well, when you see that other people are working really hard and they are solving a lot of problems and practicing a lot, then you tend to practice a lot as well. You try to compete with the amount of work that you put in. So you try to put in more work and you yeah. try to be better. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. When I was doing some of the um, harder problems, I never competed in EGOI, but that was mainly because EGOI didn't exist when I was in high school. Um, I had this group of friends who were also like former campers or current campers, and we would 
solve problems together and you know collaborate on problems so we all get better and then also compete with each other and try to beat each other. Yes. That was a fun time. So what else would you recommend for someone who's let's just say just starting? Like a lot of the tips you gave are great for the higher levels, but for the person who's just starting coding. I think you've already said like make sure you enjoyed the process and had it mm -hmm. fun. What else? What else? Um, practice a lot. Well, my main website was Code Forces, so I would say to start from like the second level, as I said, fifteen hundred, and then as you like saw like twenty prompts of fifteen hundred, and realize that you're getting comfortable with that okay. uh, difficulty range, That's then you should like move up to higher prompts, higher paid prompts. Also, like regular participating contests as they really help. Um, do it some blogs about some data structures and algorithms that will also help. Like some algorithms are really rarely in contests or on shit, but they are like good for your confidence at least. All right, so just start out code for six fifty five processes. Yes. <laughs> cool. Now you mentioned Iowa too. Did you also compete in Iowa? Uh, yeah, I competed last year and I couldn't go this year because of MIT. Okay. How did you do in Iowa? I got the silver medal. Congrats. Thank you. So what was the experience like first Iowa versus EGY? Were they similar or different? Uh, first of all, I mean EGY has like two easier problems. So they are good. Like when you start solving the easier problems, they would tend to do much better in the contest, I believe. Confidence and, boost. Yeah, confidence boost, that's why. And IOI, the problems are slightly harder. And maybe what made my difference, my experience much different was that I was quarantined in IOI. I was writing the contest from the room, from my room, while having COVID, and that was much harder, I believe, both to concentrate and focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, IOI is also like, seems to be more constructive. There are more constructive problems, I believe. Mostly, mm, more ad hoc problems in general, I would say. Like, then as you go away, data structures are more frequent. So you were quarantined, you, you had COVID during that way? Yes, I did. How did they make competition contest very difficult? Um, well, there are some pros as, as well. I was like, competing from my room, so they were looking, there were no other people and there were no yeah, but being sick would not make it easy. Yes, yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. I was trying hard not to fall asleep because I was still feeling super weak. And you still got a silver medal. Yeah, sure. That's incredible. Thank you. So, do you have any siblings? I don't have siblings. Only child? Yeah. What was, it, what was it like living in Georgia and growing up in a competitive program as teen in Georgia? Like, I'm sure now you've talked to some people in the U.S. and you know what it's like here. What would you say are the major differences are? Uh, the major difference is, like, for example, most of the people from the competitive program in Georgia are from the same school. So we all knew each other really well. We used to do team contests together. And but yeah, the main difference I would, uh, that I would say there was is that we were, like, pretty close community and it's like we're not hundreds of people to the competitive program in Georgia. So all of the biggest competitors were quite close friends there. And that's what that made the contest better I guess. So you all went to the same high school I guess? We were both at the same high school. Most of them were my classmates as well. Did a lot of them often come to MIT or where did some? Uh, no. All the MIT students that are Georgian are from my high school. Like my classmates are not here. What was your high school? Um, uh, it's like physics and math school from Georgia. It's like, yeah. Do they also breed students for like the math Olympiads and physics Olympiads? Uh, yes, math and IMO and IPHO students are all from my school as well. That's incredible. You went to the super school in Georgia. Yeah. 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 So, yes. <laughs> so what's the experience been like moving to MIT now? Like, is it similar to your school in Georgia? Is it different school in America? It's not similar like at all. We have deadlines here. Um, the work is much harder, I would say, here still. And like, I didn't really have to attend school in Georgia. As I did all the kids, I would get some privileges. Of, and also like, it was, like, I spent most of my high school years in, during pandemic. So I chose to stay at home and attend lessons online. So that I could competitive, I could do competitive programming through the online. So yeah, 
I actually have to do up here. That's what I did. Uh, did you see that there's no deadlines in Georgia? Yeah, there are no deadlines. Deadlines. You have to get work done until the lesson. Uh, but yeah, uh, when it's online, you don't know. That's how we like yes. basic skills. <laughs> Just work on competitive programming all day. Yes, that's how I lost three years ago. All right, well that's basically all the questions I have for you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Do you have any last minute tips or advice for our viewers? Well, I would just like to enjoy the process and like don't, I mean, do have a goal of like getting, making the process, but don't set a goal of like, I don't know, making it to IOI without enjoying the process. I totally agree. To summarize the tips we got here, enjoy the process, make sure your goals are, you know, Still, you're still having fun with your goals. And also one more big thing that I took away from this that I completely agree with too, is finding something to be in competition with, sure. friendly yes. competition. There's also a video about friendly competition, which I will link somewhere here on my channel. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.